Hey students, let's talk about why computer science matters. Hello, I'm Vicki Davis, a 20-year computer science teacher in Georgia, and I'm passionate about teaching computer science. In this video for grades 6 through 12 students, I'll teach you what is computer science? Why should I care about it? How can I use computer science in everyday life? And how can I learn more about computer science? Let's get started. So what is computer science anyway? I mean, don't we use computers everywhere? Well, actually in schools, there are really five ways that computers are used. First is educational technology. Educational technology is knowing how to use the tools that help you learn in your classes. Knowing how to use educational technology tools is important, but using EdTech isn't considered computer science. In fact, a 2010 study showed that most schools and even states are confused about what computer science is, but it is not education technology. Then you have data analysis or information technology. Now, sometimes uh, computer science does include data analysis, but data analysis and using databases is something that we teach, but it may or may not be included in computer science, depending on who you're talking to. Then there is computing education. Now, I don't really think this term tells you much of anything if somebody uses that term computing education. It could include all the things we're talking about or none of them. So we're not really going to use that terminology. Then there are the two important ones that we teach a lot in my classes, computer literacy and computer science. Now here's how you can understand the difference. Computer literacy, you learn how to do something. Technology literacy and fluency helps you know how to work technology to produce and create. So the definition of computer science is that it studies computers and algorithmic processes, including principles, their hardware and software designs, their applications, and their impact on society. But we need to make it a little more simple than that. Computer literacy teaches you how to work computers, but computer science teaches you how to make computers work differently. Let's look at some examples. I'm writing a paper. That's computer literacy. I just recorded a macro to set up my paper automatically for me every time I use it. That's computer science. I'm leaving school now, so I'm going to send a text message on my iPad to tell someone at home that I'm on the way. That is technology literacy. I'm on the way home, but I have programmed my iPad to automatically text someone when I leave the school based on my location. This is in shortcuts on my iPhone and in my iPad. This is computer science. I am using an app. That's technology literacy. Now I am planning the app that I'm going to create so people can access my blog and podcast. That's computer science. Now there's also something called computational thinking that is part of computer science. They used to call this algorithmic thinking and algorithms are part of what happens. Computational thinking will be a fundamental skill used by everyone by the middle of the 21st century, just like reading, writing, and arithmetic. Now, algorithms can show you your favorite things that you're most likely to be interested in on TikTok or Facebook. In fact, TikTok is known to have one of the most powerful social algorithms out. It's why so many people look at it so much. They have a powerful algorithm for good or for bad. They have an algorithm. But let's talk a moment about computational thinking. This includes solving problems, designing systems, and understanding human behavior. It is a fundamental skill. And you can start thinking in this way by, for example, you could list all the steps it takes you to from waking up to getting to school to get to school on time. 
you can make that list of all the things you do and in that order. And then you could look at that list and see if there are things that you could switch around or do differently. That is computational thinking. And that's the kind of thinking that you need to solve problems in today's world. Because the first step of coding or programming anything is breaking the process down into steps. It's computational thinking. And it's why we want to start teaching it at a very, very young age. So what is computational thinking? Well, decomposition, you can break a problem into smaller parts. Pattern recognition, where we find the order, analyze the data. Algorithmic design, where we create solutions using a series of ordered steps. And then prediction and planning, where we predict what will happen and plan how technology will respond. All of these are computational thinking, and computational thinking is part of computer science. Now, students, you do want to make the world a better place. I know that about you. And one thing we need to understand is that it is extremely important because computer science is solving the biggest problems in our world today. We're making apps and websites and resources, and we're programming algorithms to try to help scientists solve problems like cancer or even the pandemic um, that we've been dealing with recently. All of these things use computer science to help them. But what happens if we don't have enough women or enough minorities or a, just a diverse background of people, people who speak different languages and are from different countries that are part of the programming? Well, in order to solve problems that meet diverse needs of our world, we need a lot of people to go into computer science. And right now, there is a shortage. There are not enough people and definitely not enough diversity in computer science. And it's limiting the world's ability to solve problems. Now, the great thing about computer science, besides helping the world become a better place, is that, for example, here in the state of Georgia, the bachelor's degrees in the state of Georgia are the second highest paying degrees one and five years after you get out of college, second to only engineering. And there's a lot more need in computer science as well. So you have the potential to make an excellent salary in addition to making the world a better place and programming the world around you to make life more convenient for you as well. And if that wasn't enough, a country without computer scientists is at risk and will struggle to protect national security, protect voting in elections, secure energy and financial infrastructure, and grow successful businesses. Computer science can make the world a better place, but it can make your life better too. And as they say, you can either program or be programmed. Computer science education is important, but it doesn't stop at school. There are resources at code.org. You can learn how to program at Code Academy. There are robotics that you can get and you can program. This is something tinkering and making and creating is kind of a lifestyle and is something you can do to help you develop those thinking skills. Look at your life, figure out how I can become more efficient as I come to school. How can I better track my homework and make sure it gets done on time? How can I better communicate? And also, how can I unplug without having to worry about missing something? These are all solutions that computer science can help you solve. Because all of the social media apps, the email, the apps you use on your phone and the software you use are all created by computer scientists. And there are even ways in almost every app that you use that you can make that app work in different ways, customized to you. And when you do that, that is when you become a computer scientist.